Greeting, greetings respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland and I think I found the ideal location to talk about the Duke of York's current travails. So the Duke of York, that's the uh, person above me, the, bear, the current bearer of that uh, title, has got himself in a bit of hot water the past few days. So um, he had a friendship with um, the late unlamented Jeffrey Epstein dating back to at least 1999. And it's emerged, it may have actually started in the early 90s. This is support, according to some correspondence from him that he released a long time ago, unwittingly, perhaps not realizing it would become so significant. So um, we all know that um, Epstein was found guilty of um, unlawful sexual activity with a 14-year-old with a girl uh, in Florida. And then uh, last year was, was charged with uh, multiple other crimes and was in New York. Um, uh, on remand, awaiting trial and all the rest of it, when he took his own life or was possibly murdered in prison. But anyway, as Epstein can't be convicted, other people could be. And all sorts of accusations have been leveled at um, Prince Andrew. Well, these have been around for several years, actually, that um, uh, Victoria Roberts, her maiden name was, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Giuffre or Giuffre, I don't know how to say it, uh, who claimed that um, uh, she was uh, forced to copulate with him in London, in the Bahamas, and I think New York. Anyway, the age of consent in England and Wales is, is um, 16. So if it was consensual, that would have been entirely lawful. There's no case to answer. But I think she's saying that it wasn't. Um, as for the age of consent in the other jurisdictions, I don't know. Um, anyway, so the Duke of York had tried to uh, maintain a dignified silence. If anything had to be said, it wouldn't be said by him directly. He would have um, his minions go out and say things for him. Um, he'd been introduced, but anyway, he's carrying on in a roving trade, for, ro roving ambassador for British trade. He's the patron of many charities. He's the chancellor of the University of Huddersfield, and so on. But uh, and the thing is, this was a headache that refused to go away. So he thought that his strategy of um, remaining stum on the issue was not paying dividends. They had to try a change of tack. Difficult not to agree with him, but um, almost everyone seems to agree that that, that interview was disastrous. Um, raises more questions than it answered. And um, he really set off on the wrong foot by saying things which are demonstrably false. Um, for instance, he said um, his accuser claimed that he was perspiring profusely, but that couldn't possibly be true. When he was in the Royal Navy in the Falklands conflict in 1982, he had an overdose of adrenaline, as he calls it, which made him un unable to perspire for well over 30 years. And that would take us past the time in question when she supposedly was um, forced to, to copulate with him. But he does perspire now again. And obviously plenty of photos have been, have been released of him in the 90s and in the noughties when he was in public and he clearly had um, been breaking a sweat. Um, on things that he never goes out without a suit and tie in London, you know, to socialise. And many photos have been released of that stuff, of proving that that uh, is also a bogus claim. So what else did he say, which is provably false, that um, they, there's this gold rule in his family. If he's not with his daughters, then his, then his ex-wife is with his daughters. Always one of them is home. And at least, there's at least one occasion that hasn't been adhered to. But all right, once out of many possible occasions, perhaps that, that really doesn't undermine the principle too much. Um, the whole thing about being unable to perspire I've consulted my physician friends about this one, and that is hardly credible. There's a very slender chance it's true, because it was not a hereditary condition in his case. He claims he only got this about the age of 22, um, and uh, if it could have been with a severe all-over body injury, which he patently doesn't have, because long after the Falklands, he was known to go jogging for several miles, so he wasn't that badly injured, and various things like that. Um, and anyway, adrenaline is nothing to do with perspiration. I mean, you might perspire more when the adrenaline is pumping, but it's to do with a different, to do, uh, to do with a different chemical. So um, he's really cut his own throat. Um, so Emily Maitlis gave him quite a grilling. Now, in many of these interviews, what they do is they'll, they'll agree some conditions beforehand that you're only allowed to ask a limited number of questions about this, and then you have to ask, spend lots of time asking about his charitable work and other activities or something of that nature, so it's more positive. But uh, they didn't do that. On the, you've got to hand it to him, all right, he was perhaps he was brave, or is that another word for foolhardy, that uh, there was a no holes barred interview, he didn't set these conditions. That would have looked like too much of a setup perhaps a cover-up, perhaps the BBC would have agreed to all those um, conditions saying, well, that's not really an interview that's worth doing, and then they had a bit of a scoop for them. Um, so his attempt to clear the air really hasn't worked. It seems to have backfired spectacularly. I don't know of a single person who's um, said he's come out of it better, um, because the obvious thing to do was to anticipate the likely questions. What did you know? When did you know it? Uh, do you have any regrets? Do you have any apologies? Would you, apologies? Would you like to express any um, uh, sympathy for the uh, 
the so-called victims of Mr. Epstein. There's one definite victim, there's the others we don't know. And anyway, none of this came across. So he seemed to be feeling sorry for himself. Now, I do feel a bit sorry for him. His Royal Highness has never been convicted of a single crime. He's never been charged with a crime. He has never been um, uh, spoken to as a suspect by the police. He's never been interviewed as a witness by the police in any jurisdiction. And yet, his reputation is absolutely trashed. Organizations are falling over themselves in a hurry to sever all links with him. Um, uh, he, he runs these various charities and people don't want to be associated with him anymore. Um, and so I think that's very unfair. This rush to judgment. These allegations are not new. They've been out there for like 11 years, some of them. Uh, and why now? Just because of this um, interview, which was um, badly mishandled by the prince. So perhaps he's a person of the most Olympian arrogance. He disregarded uh, the advice of PR experts, I think. I don't know what their advice was. If they advised him to go to do it on this basis, that was clearly very poor advice. But ultimately, it's his call to follow that counsel or not. Advice is just that. It's advice. It's not an order. He is the one who decides ultimately. So it's really not looking good for him. Um, could he speak to the FBI under oath? Well, that's that. Be extradited? I mean, that, what, what a shocker that would be. Um, but uh, one of these uh, uh, alleged crimes uh, supposedly took place in the United Kingdom, and the British police have been aware of this for years, and they never seem to evince that the um, slightest interest in speaking to the Duke of York about this. Um, so all sorts of gags are going around about it. You may know the Duke of Edinburgh Ward scheme, the scheme for teenagers to teach them how to go camping, read maps and so on, take exercise, jogging. And so you do the Duke of Edinburgh Ward scheme to escape from the Duke of York. That's a drone strike of a joke for, for, from Frankie Boyle. Well, the grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000, or whatever you want to say, he had 10,000 of. Um, and I can't remember uh, some of the other ones. In fact, there's a school, the Duke of York School. But it's actually not to do with him personally because many people have held this title, Duke of York. The second son of the monarch traditionally holds the title Duke of York. So um, that, uh, that, that school is not named after him as an individual, is after a previous Duke of York. So perhaps he should just retire from public life, keep a low profile like his friend Ghislaine Maxwell. If he wanted to end his uh, friendship with, with um, Mr. Epstein, he could have done it by phone, but he said no, that was the coward's way out. He was gonna have the moral decency to do it face to face, man to man. All right, you could have just had lunch with him or met him in the park. No, 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 you had to go stay with him, stay with him for four days. So um, this was yet another error of judgment. So it's just been a litany, litany of injudicious decisions. Um, an imprudent association with, with Mr. Epstein after the scandal broke. I think it was only two years later he ended his friendship with, with Mr. Epstein. Uh, prior to that, I think there was nothing wrong with him being friendly with him. After all, it was, it was um, uh, the, the prince's job to promote British commerce abroad. And an American billionaire would be the ideal person to get the right introductions, possibly invest in British businesses, things like that. So it was his duty to cultivate people like Mr. Epstein. And people say, didn't you notice anything odd? Well, I mean, we don't know that, um, that uh, the prince ever met any of these young women, or there were, there were girls at the time. Um, there's that photo of him with, I think that's supposed to be um, uh, Victoria Roberts, and he claims it might be false. Noticeably, he does no recollection of her, so he says. He didn't say he didn't meet her, he's not certain that he never met her, but you know, that would be something like 20 years ago. How many people have you met in the last 20 years? Do you remember all of them distinctly? I mean, just today, I recognized someone on the street, said, oh, hi, you're the guy who's a it was wrong, it was a mistaken identity. Or you could meet someone and not remember that you met them previously. Sometimes I've met people, and I know I've met this person several years before, but he or she doesn't remember me at all, and on and on. So there are many, um, there are many um, examples uh, like that. Um, so the prince, I don't know how he's gonna dig himself out of a hole, he's dug himself in deeper, really. Um, he's very badly mishandled the, the situation, and perhaps he ought to have severed all ties with Mr. Epstein earlier. I do think there's something a little bit honorable about saying, okay, my friend has done, done something wrong, he's committed a crime, he's been sent to prison, he's paid the price for that. So that is a bad thing, I don't, I don't condone that for one moment, but he's still my friend, he still has his virtues. I think if he's um, paid the price, he ought, to be, he ought to be forgiven, and we could move on. But the thing is, it's not just about him and personal preferences, because, um, hello there, one of my fans, do you have a message of the people at home? Yes, I yeah. do, hello. Okay, great, thank you so much. I'm sure he's gonna subscribe. You see what you're doing things out of pubs does for you? Um, so uh, it's not looking good um, for the prince. What, what'll happen next, I don't know. 
don't think anyone else has been accused of anything quite so serious. All sorts of other people could be could be accused of things, but you know, he's always obviously so in the public eye. If you are a celebrity or if you're a member of the royal family and celebrity and royalty are largely gelling, look at the marriage of Meghan Markle to Prince Harry, um, then you're gonna attract a lot of crazies. There'll be kooks out there, there'll be stalkers, there'll be people to, to develop an obsession with you. Now you could force accuse him, you could have a it's sort of like, like Munchausen syndrome, you get all this attention, you should, waving your right to anonymity, perhaps that's significant, but in this era of Me Too, there's, um, there's this presumption of guilt until proven otherwise. How do you, how do you uh, prove a negative? How do you prove that you didn't have intercourse with her? That's a tall order. And so you know that you're gonna get tons of publicity. You know, it could be book deals, it could be film roles, things like that. And um, people are gonna hold you up as a heroine. Um, even if it's somehow uh, disproven, there'll be some people, your fans, who will still believe no matter you, whatever you say, there doesn't seem to be that many people who are, who are such ardent royalists they'll believe the prince no matter what. It's not like Trump. No matter how credible the evidence, no matter how many witnesses, no matter how overwhelming the proof, he has his cultists who believe him until the very end. So he's the least popular member of the royal family, more unpopular than um, uh, Meghan Markle. Um, anything else to say about um, the, uh, the, uh, the prince? Well, he's been a friend of Ghislaine Maxwell for, for years, decades. She's gone to ground. She's, she's slightly older than him. Uh, is there anything else I want to say that sort of, wow, that's proven or disproven? Um, yeah, the, the, the date in question, the 10th of March, which year was it, 2010? He claims he remembers weirdly, distinctly going to a certain restaurant in Woking, Berkshire, that's a bit to the west of London. He had a house near there odd like well what time did you go there and do you remember what you ate if you remember that clearly uh, which car you went in and who drove you and all this um, it doesn't seem that credible doesn't quite stack up doesn't doesn't prove it to be doesn't prove it to be false even he's caught lying about other issues again this doesn't prove that he's lying about the the um, gravamen of the case against him the central accusation that he had unlawful intercourse um, with uh, 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 underage girls or sometimes uh, of legal age but against their will and now, did he not notice all these girls around his house and think that was suspicious? We don't know that he met any of them for certain. He might never have seen any of them. Even if he saw them, might not have met them, might not have spoken to them. And he said there are lots of staff, there are lots of servants around. You know, you look at someone, you can't tell if she's 14 or 16 or 18. Are you going to ask? You could easily get this wrong and not really paying attention to people. I know it sounded conceited, but it's true. He does have servants around all the time and doesn't know their names all the time and not being too nosy. The other thing is Epstein owned several houses. As I say, he was a billionaire and these were complexes with many buildings. Now, the, the young girls in question might not have been the same building that he was in at that time. So uh, that's, a, that's another factor which would explain why he may not have seen them. All right, that's it all from the Duke of York. I mean, I think probably a long period of silence might be wise on his behalf, because unfortunately this, for him, this story is building and shows no sign of going away. He's just fed the monster.